Hello everyone, welcome to another one of our Facebook Live sessions. I'm joined today by my partner in crime and cohort, <laughs> Kathy Davis. We go back a long way and we still, to this day, do a lot of collaboration and I love uh, having the inspiration of having Kathy drop in every once in a while and I get this wonderful surge to go home and sew or sew at the office or whatever, so thanks for being my my artistic sewing inspiration buddy. <laughs> you might be embellishing me a bit, but thank you. <laughs> uh, not at all, really. Uh, so just a little update on So Confident. We always start with uh, the latest on that. And this coming Friday, I am filming the video for the June Hibiscus Shirt Project. And so it will be available a week from Friday, which is the 18th of June. Birthday week, by the way. Hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget you can still sign up for the monthly June class or you can always sign up for the yearly program and get all of the ones of the previous projects back through from January on and then of course onward through the rest of the year. One thing I wanted to talk about which I've never talked about is that I am a member of the American Craft and is it society? Is it museum? Is it, oh my gosh, American craft? Maybe it's just American craft. But I get this magazine and I love this magazine. I just looked through it. It's wonderful. I, if you're into color, form, shape, texture, high craft, fashion, I think you'll really love this magazine. And one of the things that I was particularly interested in, this issue is a garment by Annalisa Hedstrom who used to teach at the sewing workshop in San Francisco for me. She's a friend and a fabulous artist and she did this really interesting almost collaged garment uh, after the 2010 Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico she created this um, garment called Queen of the Sea Christ Tears of Brown Oil and it's just a really interesting garment but I was particularly thrilled to see what she does because we like her work mm -hmm. we've always liked her work she does um, silk dyeing and shibori and you know she's a she's a, one of those original art to wear people mm -hmm. and here we are hacks <laughs> well <laughs> I'm a hack, I don't know about you, but you know, there are fine artists like Annalisa right. and then there's us yeah. who simply sew and slap things together. So we're going to show you some slap together things today, how about that? <laughs> and so the first two slap together garments are the two garments that we have on. And we thought it would be, are we the Bobsy Twins today, sort of, kind of? Oh, let's think of something a little more sophisticated than Bobsy. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. But Kathy and uh, note, made note, and, and I've been following it as well, that this is the summer of, you know, kind of spreading our wings and getting out of our loungewear and stepping it up a bit, even at home and now that we're going out some, and, but yet we want to sew something easy. And so the easy summer top is what we're wearing. And you were inspired by some uh, garments that you'd seen online that were pieced. And you were inspired by the fact that you could basically make a garment out of two pieces, right. a front and a back, <laughs> with nothing else going on. But of course, you can't leave it alone. So I have on the Eureka top, and you lengthened it. Uh, like six and a half inches right. or so. The front is lengthened six and a half. The back is lengthened nine and a half. So I've got this little. And then we have a 10 inch vent here. Yeah. But really, it's kind of your summer loungewear in silk. Exactly. Silk and viscose <laughs> prints. And it's your opportunity to either buy a bunch of prints or dig in your stash and see what you've got and pull it together. We're going to show a little bit more about this in a second. But with the scraps, from this. Right. You made this. Yes. I had the leftovers from that, which, you know, I brought that in. I thought, oh, it's hard, to, really hard to waste the leftovers. And there are several other things that we had. To me, after I finished this, I put it on and I thought, you know, that is the perfect summer top. 
that will take you everywhere. You can wear it to dinner. You can wear it to a picnic. Uh, we don't really worry about what we wear to the grocery store anymore. We're kind of upscaling our, <laughs> our, yeah. our wardrobe. Right. But, you know, I thought, you know, that, that top, I was so impressed. I thought that will take you everywhere yeah. with a lot of elegance. That's right. So you use the scraps for your... Well, and so wh how we moved on is that when I saw this, I loved it. But I also like a garment with a collar. Right. What? And we both talked about maybe a little sleeve. But, you know, we can... You know, when I go to Santa Fe, maybe once a year, I look at the women in Santa Fe, and the Santa Fe outfit is black tank top, black tiered skirt, 14 pounds of turquoise jewelry. <laughs> But they're all sleeveless, and when I see them on the street, I really don't gasp at their arms. <laughs> it all works out. You know, we just, right. sometimes we get too sensitive about that. Right. So. But a little sleeve sometimes is nice, yeah. and a little yes. collar sometimes. You just want right. to just have a little something that, to cover up the neck thing. But, um, and so this mix it So I top. moved to the mix it top, which to me, answered all my wants. Right. It's the simp it's the perfect summer top. Right. With a little something at the neck and a right. little something at the arms. Right. And so you don't feel quite as exposed. Although I put this on this morning it's and beautiful. you know, I'm 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 all over this. I'm, I know. I I'm wearing <laughs> this. So you came in and you said, "Well, wear that with some skinny pants." So I put on my Madrid pants. Uh-huh. Which I really like. Um, so they're skinny. And they are made in uh, several panels, so there's seams everywhere on this pant so that you can uh, really do some nice fitting. And I made them in the cotton lycra, black cotton lycra that I love, that I've made my Picasso pants out of, and now they're my Madrid pants. And you have on your uniform pants. Yeah, <laughs> my black Picasso. Erin kind of laughs when I wear them Come all on, the time. Come on, stand back so she can see you full length Erin says, oh, the Picasso pants again. Yes, Erin. <laughs> this is my uniform. <laughs> black, but hers are in a black knit. Right. Mine are in black. Well, I have knit ones, too. I mean, I have yeah. three pairs of black Picasso pants. I have knit, I have cotton and lycra, and I have the viscose linen. So I have my choice of, mm -hmm. I don't know, seasons and the feel and whatever mood I'm in of the, of the day. So, but this, the fact that the Madrids that I have on have a little spandex in them helps on this skinny woven uh -huh. fabric and this particular pattern which has a waistband and a zipper and, you know, it's a little more fitted. So anyway, we're all decked out today in our pieced, perfect, summer of me the back of me okay so here's the back all right so let's talk about let's bring out the fabrics that you used and, and your starting points so um, we have this is going to be a little bit tricky so we'll probably have to put, lean some of them back here but one of the fabrics that was used is this silk right here and you can see that there was there's a border on this and so you have cut that on the cross grain. So that's one of your principles. You don't pay much attention to grain. You pay attention to grain, but not whether it's crosswise or lengthwise. Is that right. correct? Well, on this project, you got away with cutting it either way, lengthwise, crosswise, whichever small pieces. showed up. Right. Because they're, and they're tightly woven. Right. So then our famous gold paisley, now I'm looking here. Did you, you you used this border? Did you use this border someplace? In the back. In the back, right here. You have this wonderful little kind of a surprise blue border there, which I think I didn't get the brown in, but I really like the blue in there. So we have the paisley. So then we have this wonderful sort of burst. This feels very Asian to me. Uh, this was an absolute, this is kind of crepey. This was an absolutely wonderful uh, fabric to work with. Yeah, anytime it has a crepe texture to it, it's just a little bit easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. it does, it's not quite as slippery. Right. And it, it, was, it attaches well. Right. Yeah. And also the front and the back, I mean, the, the color did vary just a little bit from front and the back, but it was either side. Then we have <laughs> this which is this all over rather abstract kind of painterly splatter sort of affair. Is this silk or viscose? I, I can't remember. 
Viscose. Viscose. Yeah. And do we have this one in there? Yes, yes. right yes. up here. So this is a rayon chalet. And so already back, and a big piece in the back. We've talked about crepe and more charmeuse textures and chalets. So already we've combined two or three different textures. But this is the fabric. This was the starting point fabric. Is that correct? This was the one I ooed over when I saw it come in. So this is quite a piece of fabric, actually. We have a bent roll here. So this is a viscose crepe. Let's back up a little bit if we can so they can really see it. So it's a huge print. And if you were just looking at this as yardage, you would say, well, I can't wear anything of that scale. That's outrageous. But when you break it up into smaller pieces, then all of a sudden, you've got something you can work with. So this was your starting point. And I remember On your when top, yes. Yes. And so I tried to keep some of the bigger pieces in this scale. If you turn around, let's see what he did in the back. So this is <clears throat> went all the way here. On my top, this is what was left over. But you'll notice almost two thirds of this top is just one piece. Oh. All my piecing is over here. So you can take a, <clears throat> a big scale and break it up, do part of your garment in it. And right, then so do, this is do all piecing. one. So that's about two thirds of the back, two thirds of the front. That's, that's that was the leftovers of that, and believe me, there's only about three fibers left of it. And so I did get sleeve, and I don't feel it's an overwhelming uh, pattern at no, all. No, it's not, and you're a small person, and you can wear a big pattern, so like that. All right, so let's talk about how you <laughs> cut it up. So we're going to show you some schematics here. Can you see all of it? All right. This is not <clears throat> actually rocket science, but I, some people, it's hard for them to even get started. Right. So I just drew out what I did. I mean, you don't have to keep this, but it's a good starting point if you, if you don't really know where to go. And if you, each piece, each square or rectangle, like this is 9 by 14, 15 by 12 and a half, you know, if you piece all this together, you will have a rectangle that's large enough to cut this piece out. So you're basically <laughs> cutting rectangles. Right. First. Right. And this will give you enough seam allowance also. And so then you cut these out of certain sizes and you lay, do you lay them on your table and kind of do a puzzle of putting them together? Or have you already sort of figured out that this one is your main one? I, I drew it on the, on a, um, what do I want to say? Uh, a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> I drew the outline of the garment on, oh. on a piece of paper okay. and, the, and then kind of just. So you sketched out right. a That's sort of did. <laughs> idea first in a sketchbook or a piece of paper or whatever. Uh -huh. you, you drew the outline of the Eureka top and then uh -huh. you broke it up a little bit. That's what I do too, is just a uh -huh. little bit of a small schematic. Right. So I have a starting point. Right. Then you have, uh, then you begin to cut your rectangles and you arrange them and then you start to sew them together. And by the time you are done, you have a large rectangle and then you cut out the yes. Eureka top pattern from yes. that. So yes. you can shift it even after yes, that a little can. bit. And <clears throat> on the piecing, if you do draw it out, you can see like the quilters do, there's a pattern. You would, you would uh, piece these two first, piece these two first, and then put that together, and then piece these. So you know, there's kind of a pattern to piecing, so it's you won't end up with weird edges where things meet. Yeah. So there's a little engineering and thought that goes into it. There's sort uh -huh. of a one, two, three, four, right. five, right, six, seven, eight, nine uh -huh. kind of thing. Uh huh. Yeah. All right, so that's now and also when we did, I did lengthen it. I did make a little bit more of a hem allowance for the vent. Yes, because the Eureka pattern does not have a vent. No. So she made a vent. I a think when you're doing a long garment like that, it just adds to the style. I agree. To have a vent and the hem hemlines to be different lengths. 
Well, I agree. If you, if you lengthen a garment, and a, particularly a boxy garment, and you don't have a vent, then it's going to be like a bubble right. when you're done. Yeah. And this, the vent allows that to have a better drape and flow and more of a lengthening look to it. Uh -huh. All right, so the back is essentially the same. Now, don't stress over trying to replicate this. Right. Betsy has put all of this on a blog on our website. Uh, if you go to sewingworkshop.com, you click on blog, it'll be the first thing that comes up because we, she just did it like a minute ago. No, it was yesterday actually. But uh, these schematics are on there and a little bit about, a little bit, a little text, but mostly you're gonna, if you're wanting to know these designs, um, they'll be there. And so you even, no matter what size you're making, whether an extra small or an XXL, would you generally use the same sizes of pieces? I think this would comfortably fit at least up to a medium. I mean, it is, um, you will have excess. I did base this on a small size. So you might cut wider, but Wide. not necessarily longer right. pieces. Right, the pattern doesn't. So you might <laughs> cut 13. Uh, By 16. Like, yeah, 13. No, let's see. Thir thir <laughs> thir <laughs> the first We're number. So with math. The math. first number is the width. All right, so this might be like 16 by 15 and a half if you're wanting to make sure you have more width to right. make a larger size. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure you need to go that far, but maybe. Yeah. I mean, you always want right. to <laughs> cover your <laughs> cover All right. your ass. Okay, so <laughs> this is generally what happens. First, a small drawing and a sketch, then it translates to this and then rectangles that are cut out and then sewn together and then the Eureka top is cut out from the rectangles. So that is the process. Mm -hmm. right. And I have to say, as you're getting started, you will doubt yourself a lot whether, if you look at Linda's top, the colors are not necessarily really, really, really matching. And I think that's kind of a feature of it. Don't worry about oh my gosh, this doesn't go with this. But, you know, if you repeat this somewhere else, it all, you know, it looks, it, the more you work with it, the better it's going to look. Right. I think that there is a, um, a mixture of scale here. We have big, uh -huh. we have stripe-ish, we have small medallions, paisley. So there's a mixture of motifs. Not all florals, although that's another way to go. I mean, we certainly see that with some of the really... Uh, fantastic designers out there, but I am more of a mind to combine a stripe and a floral and a plaid and a, right, you know, a, a big scale, a small scale, and really play with that. <clears throat> and then I think when you stand back and kind of squint, don't look at the precise motif and the and the exact shade of color. You, if you stand back and look at this in a group and even squint and not pay attention to specific things, something will pop out as being wrong. Maybe, yes. We maybe, so. or maybe not, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yes. All right, so this was the original, the uh, Eureka. This is the uh, scrapped version <laughs> uh, from the, the, the uh, Eureka. This is the Mix It Top. So let's look at some of the other ones that you've made in the past from other, other things. So um, you've done some beautiful work on the other pattern that's in the Mix It Top pattern. This is the Mix It Shirt same pattern and that's a pattern that's going to be on sale this week but again uh, you've used a major piece for an entire front and then pieced right the other half the same so in that you the don't back. Have, that's right this is one piece of fabric this is pieced so not everything has to be pieced no in fact i think you know i kind of like the look of yeah just a big piece and then put a little bit of piecing in it so. i agree okay and your seams are just traditional seams, sewn, and then surged generally? I, I did surge. That's all surged inside. I, okay. I'd sew. You, you have to do your surging also in, in the same order you're doing your piecing. Yes. You know, put your two together, and then surge that, and then go on. Um, yeah. So here's another one where the back is. The back, this is all one piece. There's a seam here. Yes, there's a seam there. And then the front's just some horizontal mm -hmm. and not worrying about things matching across the front as far as seams go. Right. This is the Liberty shirt. This is the Zen. 
And then again, I used long pieces on this. Yeah. The only piecing here is are these horizontal ones. And this is all one, and this is a separate piece here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The collars are not pieced necessarily, you know, each, but, but you can have an upper collar in one fabric and an under collar in something else. So the, the transitions and differences can be kind of subtle. This one is basically one fabric with a piece section and a piece section. These are smaller little uh, squares. Uh, so if you're a quilter, you know, you're good at that. <laughs> we, Kathy and I struggle with that, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you can, can uh, absolutely do that. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Let's show this. So this is a pretty major uh, garment uh, that was inspired by a runway show by Dolce & Gabbana, either last fall, I believe it was last fall. <clears throat> and Kathy, uh, with a, some assistance from Samantha Plo, uh, last fall made this. And it was really fun to see both of them kind of collaborate. <laughs> uh, Kathy would, uh, would put something together, Samantha would sew it together, Samantha would come and say, well, I think we need this. And it was just, the whole thing progressed piece by piece, as I recall. It so was, there wasn't like yes. a major commitment to the whole garment from the outset. It was a surprise assignment. Linda ha kind of handed it to Samantha and me and said, okay, I want this. She showed us a picture. And yep. you know, it is fun when we choose fabrics. Yeah. I mean, we, la we laid out maybe 10 fabrics on the table. Right. And then you would edit down. The same with uh, this project here. Samantha was actually here when we, That's right. when we chose the fabrics for that. And it's fun to um, have everyone's input on it, but you end up with some things that right. maybe you wouldn't have chosen alone, but it all works out. Well, this is the Crossroads shirt, and this was part of So Confident Series 9, which was last year, and it's the final pattern of that series. So if you were a member of So Confident Series 9, you have this pattern, but we've just put this pattern on the website this week. Crossroads shirt, you can get the pattern. It won't be cut up like this, of course, but with, although there are some natural seams on that pattern that do allow you to do some color blocking and pattern mixing. Um, but this particular piece is lined, which the pattern is not. One thing I wanted to point out about this is it does have one piece in here that's a cotton voile, so it was sheer. So you backed it with a stripe. And so I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but there's a little underlayment of a stripe under this. So you can change the color or character of certain fabrics if you think about underlining them or lining them. If you have a sheer fabric and you're not really that interested in the tone of it, you think it's sort of right but not quite, try putting a really weird opposite color under it and it'll change the tone of it. We've done that a lot. Something that reads as brown might re read as reddish later if you put something else under it. So just remember that. You can change the <clears throat> character of the fabric by underlining certain pieces. <clears throat> so that is the uh, crossroads. <coughs> Excuse me. I'll just bring out my Eureka skirt again, which I showed uh, two or three weeks ago on a Facebook Live in three different mixed fabrics, and that is the, the uh, skirt that goes with the Eureka top. So you're going to have an opportunity, if you want to make a simple top, you could piece and color mix the skirt as well. Well, what if, no, what if people don't want a piece? You know, what if they're not interested in that? So what do you do? Oh, we, <laughs> you know, forget that piecing. That's way too much work. I don't have time. I've got gardening to do, places to go, sho baby showers to <laughs> attend. Um, no time. And this would go everywhere except maybe the garden. Probably not the garden. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So this is the Eureka top again, the one that I have on. This time, Kathy has put the sleeve bands on it. No sleeve bands on mine that I have on, but the sleeve bands are here. So you get a little more coverage on the sleeve if you choose to, which is what I requested you to do. So this is a, a, a fabric that has a very large repeat. What is it? 54 inches? 54. 54 inches. Right. So you thought about this to the extent of visual weight, I think. The darker is at the bottom. Am I right about this? Right. And I, the lighter is at the top. 
and you place the flour in such a way that it's not smack dab in the middle, which I like very much. Same thing here. It did take me, uh, we'll show you the fabric, but I toed and froed about over an hour about how to cut it. I had just enough to cut it in this perfect traditional form. But I was really, really tempted to just lay the pattern on and let, because there's some beautiful, beautiful flowers on the side. Oops. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, and this, I think this is a pattern that could be cut out on the cross grain. Uh -huh. And sometimes when you cut out on a cross grain, you can save yardage. It doesn't take as much. Right. Let's hold this up a little bit. Right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I started, I got it from here, and then yes. we did, but to me, you could l lay it here. I mean, and this much would show, your, your uh, motif would be really, really cut up, but I think in a way that it would be kind of abstract design in it. That's right. So you could buy a yard of this, or, and just see how it goes. Right. Or you could buy two yards of this, and then you could really do some placement work right and decide precisely where you want to go with it right but lucky for me i did this so i have all this left over at home which will be another can't <laughs> wait to see that one that'll be another week you'll see that at some point but this is a beautiful weight of i love that yeah um i don't remember the fiber whether it's silk or viscose it's probably viscose we're getting so it's, many more viscose it's organic organic viscose, which yes. I think is an interesting term because viscose is half organic anyway. Never mind, we won't get into that <laughs> now, but uh, that was how it was labeled from the manufacturer. So there you go. So there's another one here that I think would be interesting to use as a single piece because it is already sort of blocked and cut up for you. This would be great and easy. Yep. So patchwork. And this he is, is viscose. This is viscose. This has a really nice, uh, not super weighty drape, but here, raise it just a little bit so they can see it. We're getting our muscles tuned up here today. This is really, really, really interesting patches because they're yeah. not put on symmetrically. So you could make the garment out of this or cut up. This would be even right. interesting as yes. well. I and agree. so you don't have so many rectangles. You have just diagonals and little edges and things like that. All right. So um, let's look at some fabrics that, let's get rid of these. So we put together some combinations of fabrics that we thought would be interesting together. Which side do you want to start on? Um, let's start on this because people always object to, oh, I can't wear that big scale. But to me, this can be cut up and pieced back together. And you could mix it with any of the florals. But what would be interesting is to add these borders to the edge of your cut up so it separates this and maybe right. a floral. So it would look like you would have an insertion there right. or a piping when yes. actually it's just the edge of how you cut it. Right, I think that would be just yeah. terrific. And you can pick any color you wanted. This is a crepe, viscous crepe. So this has a nice weighty drape and would be easy to work with as well. But yes, this is already cut up, but I think cut up even more would really be interesting. Yeah, I do too. But combine it with any of these. This is a Liberty of London uh, cotton print. This is probably one of my favorite fabrics of all time. I love paisleys anyway, and I love the colors of this. And why I haven't made something out of this at this point, I have no idea, but I think I might have to make a Eureka like this, just out of this, just to wear this summer with some white pants mm -hmm. uh, or some pale pink, something or others. I'm also really intrigued with this one. This is a, a rayon crepe. And when I bought this, I had Betsy in mind. I don't know if Betsy is enchanted with it. Okay, Bessie's behind the camera today, by the way, and Bessie loves this. That's always my stamp of approval uh, when I order something and so with, with Betsy in mind. Uh, frankly, I see this as a great summer skirt or dress, but it could be cut up, and so you would just see little sh 
edges That's, of these flowers, yeah. and it wouldn't look like these big motifs of flowers. And look, I would mix it with this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not a flower person, but I think this would be fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. And it's kind of both the same kind of crepe. Yes, they're very similar in... Oh, oh yeah, wouldn't that be fantastic? I think it's great. Yep, that would be good. And then we have, you know, look at all the different scales we have here, from a small trailing flower thing to a big bold floral to a paisley to a small floral to a geometric I mean that's what we're talking about this mixture of scale and you may look at this and think well those people have lost their minds <laughs> but I guarantee you if you perfect. cut those up and put it into a piece top like this you people will stop you uh -huh. at the grocery store <laughs> well, <laughs> and, yes. where yeah, did you get wherever that top? and uh, tell you oh my gosh where did you get that top <laughs> and you get to say you made it all right so let's talk about this this little combo over here so I think our starting point on this one was either this or this I kind of have forgotten well we chose again the 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 one people are scared of the big yeah the big black and white bold and yes. to me, I think just a splash of this in something mixed with it, this little print. Yes. Mixed with this. It would just be beautiful. Yeah. Any of these together. So again, this, a mixture yeah. of scale. I mean, I think all of these could work within the same garment. And we have a mixture of cotton, viscose, cotton and linen. Yeah, I would do cotton. this and, mm -hmm. and this. Absolutely. That's right. And... That's this nice. is very possibly the most unique fabric in terms of how it's printed that I've ever laid eyes on. So it is, what you probably can't see is, a small navy and white tiny little check for a good amount of yardage. And then look, this is the print that shows up. So it's a big panel, but this print is in one lower corner of the panel. And it's this very traditional, almost toile-like pattern that's, uh, you know, the, the man, the two men fighting over something there under the palm trees. <laughs> I mean, it's just... In the Amazon. In the, yeah, and then, the, yeah, it's just <laughs> really interesting. This is cotton, I'm pretty sure. Yes, all cotton. And so this would be fun. So how would you use this? Well, I did, I thought maybe... Um, what skirt do we have? The six cents six skirt? Six skirt. But don't put it in the middle of the skirt because it'll right. look like an apron. But um, back, which is also another tendency uh -huh. in my, uh, to do, although that's better than smack dab in the front. But, uh, but would you cut this up? I'd hate to, but maybe I would. Yeah, so I think this combines, let's put it down here with, see, I think this goes with these down here. Yeah, I loved it with this. This is just a perfect, yeah. perfect floral Maybe for this. Drop that a little bit there so they can kind of see that. Can you see that, Betsy? <laughs> We're Sorry. wrangling. We're going to really drop it here. All right, you hold that, and I'll work with this. I actually would do the top you have on, just don't get it in the middle. That's right. So I think it's good with this plaid. I love it with the plaid, yes. Yeah. And I also like it with the big black and white. Yes. So, very interesting fabric. All right. Um, so you want to play with a little piecing, but you don't want to commit to a garment. You're a little bit afraid to, of, of not having the proportions right or doing something. Um, I wrote an article for Threads a long time ago, November 2008, number 139. And the idea is to make yourself a panel of pieced fabric, not really thinking about what's going to happen to it, and then insert it in the back of a garment. And actually the garment, the uh, uh, article was about seam finishes for silks, but here's the garment. So I just made this panel, and I played around with different seam finishes, Hong Kong, French, surged, I'm not sure what all in here now, turned and stitched. And so if you want to learn about how to sew with silk and viscose, I put that in the same category. 
and fool around with seam finishes, just make yourself a panel and then put it into a jacket, something like the High Five jacket would be great. All right. So we have on sale this week all of the fabrics that we've shown. We have the Eureka top and skirt pattern, the Mix It top shirt and tank pattern. We have the, a tutorial that's kind of fun and new, brand new. It's called Contemporary Piecing, and it shows you a lot of inspirational pictures of how to uh, piece and where to piece and varieties of patterns that have been pieced together from various designers and some pictures of our work as well, plus all of the information about seam finishes for silks from top to bottom. Uh, that is called Contemporary Piecing, and that is $5 this week, which is, I don't know, I get sort of silly on Mondays, but uh, $5. And anything else? Let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, of course. So we have the Crossroads shirt, but that's featured in our compendium. Now, the compendium ha is a magazine, a beautiful, beautiful magazine that Betsy's put together that shows the how to take the Crossroads shirt and turn it into this pattern. It also includes making it into a long pieced coat and also a short fur jacket. So there are three different Crossroads in the, in the compendium. I just realized you had made all of those garments in that compendium, every single one of them. <laughs> It's the Kathy Davis compendium. <laughs> you know, we forgot to show this. This is another. Um, yeah, uh, this was a, a panel from several years ago that you didn't quite know what to do with. But I just took took it as it came off the bolt. Yeah. And uh, placed it. Well, I did put this in the front, but it, it works. So yeah. this is one of my favorite tops. It's kind of a sleeper on the rack. People kind of pass it by. But it has the little collar that the, the front is a fold. It's not a seam. Right. Your seam's in the back of the collar, so you're not fighting meeting up these edges. Yeah. It is a garment that has bust darts. Yes. So for all the people who, who need bust darts, you know, we had a um, seminar last time we had seminars, and all the women tried it on, and they'd never taken the time or you know, to put it on, and they were just really all impressed. Oh, I'm going to make this now. Um, the sleeves are capped, and I think some people walk by that, but I've, lengthen I've lengthened them two inches, and I think they're a great summertime length. Yeah. All right, it's a beautiful top. All right, we have any questions? We do. So um, I'm going to start with the Eureka. Can you please turn around? Yes. And remind people that it's the Eureka. All right. And I remember they can't hear me. <laughs> okay, I, yes, someone wanted to turn. This is the Eureka top without the sleeve bands. Okay. So these have just been finished with a little hem. You would need to extend, if you're going to do a little hem, you need to extend the pattern just enough for a little hem, or you could bind the edges and not mm -hmm. have to. Um, and, the, and of course, because it's a woven, then the binding at the neck is on the uh, bias. Okay. Yes. And how long is it, how long is it lengthened? It's lengthened six and a half in the front, nine and a half in the back. So right, with a 10 inch vent. And a 10 inch vent. And what seam allowance did you use for the PC? I surged them. What seam allowance? Did oh, five eighths. What seam allowance did we use for the uh, piecing? Five eighths of a seam allowance. We're not quilters. <laughs> we don't think in terms of quarter inch. So we uh, five eighths of an inch and trimmed them. <laughs> five eighths of an inch and, and then trimmed them when I surged. Yeah. Okay. I am wearing the Mix It Top. And did you lengthen or shorten it? Oh, yes. This is lengthened an inch and a fourth. And it does, does it have a bust start? It has two bust starts here, which I like because that lets it hang evenly across. It's not right. swinging And this up. is lengthened at two and inches. The sleeves are lengthened two inches. Okay. And this one is not pieced in, uh, as much. It's only pieced here. This is a solid fabric here. Um, we had a question on where you can find the Crossroads shirt compendium, and that is in the sales section, and there's a link from the front page. Home All right, page. so the compendium can be found in the sales section, and there's a link from there. Okay. Sorry. Um, 
Oh, can you show her other mix it and show the back, please? Yes. This is the back. Remember, this is all one fabric that just happened to be. It's a little bit like working with this. You just cut it out and see where it, where it goes. See, I would make the whole top in this without any piece. Well, piecing. I would too. <laughs> and also that one, the one that had the patchwork, right. you know, I would just do that as well. Uh -huh. But this is the front and this is the back. Um, there's a question on what size are your tops, especially the Eureka? What size is my top? This is a small. And you have a small. Right. Mm -hmm. What was the number of the threads article? The number of the threads article is 139, November 2008, number 139. Has the uh, buttons on the front. Um, we had a question about the fabric being online. It should all be in the sale page. There are two pages to the sale page. All of the fabrics will be on the sale page, and there are two pages. We have a lot of fabrics on sale this week, so there are two pages of sale fabrics. Um, is the patchwork print black or brown? The patchwork print is uh, oh. <laughs> this patchwork? I guess. Probably. Um, all right, so this is uh, royal blue, black. There is black. Maroon brown, brown. tan, and gray blue, and a little bit of cream. This one, or? Yes, the one you loved. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is silk charmeuse. This would make a great top. I know. For summer. That just says summer to me. What fabric is the black and white? This, the black and white fabric is viscose, viscose crepe. Um, do you need to worry about mixing viscose with cotton? If you're worried about any of that, uh, then you would pre-treat your fabrics and then they would be fine. Personally, I don't worry about it ever, but, um, and I've never gotten in trouble, not once. Have you? No, but I wouldn't launder that. Well, that's right. <clears throat> I, this would not go in the washing machine. No. If you want to put it in the washing machine, then do yeah. it before you start. Right. It may all work. Yeah. Can you show the back of the Crossroads shirt? Mm -hmm. And they asked for the inspiration picture, and Samantha actually posted a link to it. Oh, oh nice. All right, <laughs> this is the back of the Crossroads. Now, the compendium <laughs> on this does have the schematics for how to break it up. It has the techniques of how to sew it together. It has the technique of how to line it, I believe. I haven't looked at it recently, <laughs> um, but yes, so there it is. Kathy, this, was, this is a big one for you. When did you start sewing, and when did you start <laughs> deviating from patterns? <laughs> Ooh, when did you start sewing, and when did you deviate from patterns? You know, I'm not <clears throat> a really great deviator. I'm a great copier. You know, if I see a picture in one of the fashion magazines that inspires me, like I have to say, it came from, that was the inspiration for this. You know, the garment was $1,295. So <laughs> I thought, oh, we can do that easily. So, but when did you start sewing? Um, I started probably in fifth or sixth grade at home. Uh, we lived on a farm. We didn't have new garments from the store, but we could buy any fabric. Oh, you sound like you're... <laughs> we could buy any fabric at J.C. Penney's or Sears Basement, and we made all of our clothes, and I didn't feel we looked bad. <laughs> right. Well, neither one of us are what I would call formerly, formally trained no. as sewers, but we have certainly been students of sewing and stitching from a lot mm. of great teachers over the years mostly sewing workshop based right. teachers who in the old days we would bring into Topeka for classes or we would go to San Francisco and take their classes but um, we both you grew up 
sewing. I grew up, my mother was a sewer of my sorts. Mother. Mine too. And allowed me to use the sewing machine that was in the hallway of the, of the outside my mom, bedroom. Yeah, mom kind of led us on our own. If we had trouble, we asked. Yeah. But she didn't stand over us and tell us what to do, so we yeah. kind of figured it out ourselves. So we've been sewing for a long time, <laughs> right? <laughs> which is what it takes. More than those 10,000 hours, by the way. I think we're into our fifth 10,000 hour, 500th 10,000 hour. In my opinion, sewing takes practice. And for every, I've said this over and over and over, for every five things I make, five of them turn out pretty well. I'm going to wear two of them. Three, oh. for whatever reason, I don't put it on. Can't explain it. I have to let it go. Doesn't feel right. Doesn't feel like me. Didn't turn out how I visualized it. So I think you have to, as a sewer, just um, it's the process. You have to like the process. And the end result may be great, and it may not. And I love the process. To me, it's, yeah. the process to me is more important than the finished garment. She never wears. She brings all these clothes in, leaves them here. I get to wear them. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I've been thinking about this. Um, I don't know if I'm opening up a can of worms or not, because we do have a one yard minimum order of fabrics on our website. And if you're wanting to order all six of these fabrics, um, that would be a lot of fabric. I've toyed with the idea of, you know, cutting the fabrics into maybe half yard pieces and maybe putting together some half yard piece kits and you know I could probably do that but I we don't have that as a product mm -hmm. on our website I think if you're interested in that you might want to email me we'll see if I'm flooded or not flooded and whether that can even happen it's uh, it's something to consider we did I did but that. but if somebody is in their stash let's go back to that and right. you want to know what do they get out of their stash? A half a yard of something? A quarter of a yard of something? I don't think it really matters. I had a half yard of each one of those. Okay. Which turned out to be plenty. So All right. if you have a best friend. Right. And obviously <laughs> she got two shirts out of those half yards. Yeah, right. It was great. Um, which fabrics don't have black? Which fabrics do not have black? This. Um, this. Well, the, that's a black center to that flower. I said, okay, this one, no black, no black. I wouldn't call this as having any black other than the selvage. <laughs> For some reason, it has a black stripe on the selvage. The, uh, this the blue does not, one. This does not have black. Well, it has black flowers. Oh, it does? Oh, yeah, it has a little black. Um, that one. Obviously, oh, we didn't show this fabric. This is on sale, and there's no black. See, to me, that's a great neutral filler. Yes. If you put that up against even this. Right. I think that works. This works. Look at that. Yeah. Um, can the fabric on the mannequin, which is that fabric, can that be hand washed? Any fabric can be washed, either in the washing machine or by hand. It just depends on whether you like the results or not. So we suggest whenever you get some fabric, you cut off your four inch square, throw it in the washing machine and see what happens. See if the color bleeds, see if it shrinks, see if it changes in character in terms of the texture. So absolutely anything can be hand washed, um, but you know, it could very easily be machine washed and to be beautiful, you would have to see. I think you would lose some of the, <clears throat> the sheen on the finish here. You might. I mean, it might be okay. It's not one that I, my first impression would be to. But hand wash, it. it probably wouldn't lose the sheen, do you think? Oh. Do you think it would? The answer is we're not sure. I wouldn't. Do, <clears throat> the answer is I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I'd probably put that in, uh, I would put that in the washing machine and see what happened. I, I have the feeling it might be okay. We're, we're, so obviously there's no great answer here because we've already disagreed about the approach on it, which is fine. Um, so you have to test. Does silk um, cling to other fabrics? 
The silk cling to other fabrics totally depends on the texture of the silk. Silk charmeuse, silk crepe de chine, silk four ply silks, three ply silks, they're, they're not clingy fabrics. Silk noil is the clingiest fabric ever. So I think it depends on which silk. But these drapey silks, they're not clingy. Can we see that fan? Sure. Now this is one I would be confident in washing. Yeah, you could definitely wash this. <clears throat> silk washes really beautifully, really. Um, the only time I've ever had trouble with silk in the washing machine is when it's had a really saturated red color and the red has run. If you have some really brilliant color, it might run. But silks wash beautifully. This has been on... <clears throat> this is not silk, by the way. I think this is viscose. Right. But it's been on... No, it's polyester. Oh, it's polyester. It would be there a you perfect go. Not going to shrink, not going to fade, not going to do anything. And it feels wonderful. Yeah. Exactly. There's uh, someone who's saying they can't find one of the fabrics, but we will double check once we're off air here and make sure that all of them are on the website in the sale category. All right, well, next week is another Facebook Live, and I already know what I'm going to do, and I'm pretty excited about it. So um, we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks. Thank you.